Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we are celebrating Pentecost. The word Pentecost means 50th. In the book of Exodus, chapter 34, verses 22, we read about celebration of the Feast of Weeks, Feast of Harvest. On the 50th day, the entire Israel community would join together to celebrate and to thank the Lord for the gift of harvest. And this very feast of weeks got transformed into feast of Pentecost. When the disciples were gathered together in the closed room. And God poured out his divine spirit upon them. Our holy scriptures are filled with the actions of the divine spirit. We read in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 2, the earth was formless and void, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And the scriptures also close with the action of the divine spirit. We read in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 17. The spirit and the bride say, come. And after four verses, Bible closes. And from the book of Genesis till the book of Revelation, the lots of events happening because of the power of the spirit on the people, on the community, on Paul, on the disciples, on Peter and finally on the birth of the Holy Church on the Pentecost day. I would like to reflect with you why Pentecost happened in the early church and why this Pentecost is not happening again and again to the modern church, to our church. Our charismatic friends normally zero in on the miracle of tongues, speaking in tongues. But on the Pentecost day, that was not the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle was the transformation of the disciples, the transformation of Christians, the birth of the mother church, that was the great miracle. And in fact, we cannot duplicate the events that happened on the Pentecost day. We cannot go back to Jerusalem. We cannot go back to the upper room and wait on the pouring of the Holy Spirit upon us. But we can create an atmosphere of that sort which existed in the early church when they awaited for the gift of the Holy Spirit, we can create an atmosphere. The scriptures say, they were together. They were together. That's what the scripture says. With one accord, in one mind. That's why the Pentecost happened that day. They were together with one accord and one in mind. The first point that we learn from today's readings. They were united in one purpose. They were united. And unitedly they waited upon the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3, we read, No one can say Jesus is the Lord 
unless he is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That was the unity of the disciples and the early church. They worked together as a team. They worked for the glory of God. And they began to carry out the will of the Father, the command and the mission of Jesus. We have different functions. But we have the same goal of witnessing to Jesus Christ. The first thing that we learn from the disciples, they were united in one purpose. And the second thing that we learn, they were united in prayer. They prayed together. They prayed for one another. And when we pray for another person, in fact, we focus less on our sales, on our problems, on our worries. And in fact, we carry the burdens of the others to the Lord and get that particular individual sanctified through our prayers. They were united in prayer. The third lesson we learn, they were united in power. All were filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They were found right with God. And they were filled by the Spirit. And they produced amazing results. They healed. They sanctified. They baptized. They began to be martyrs for their faith. That were the amazing results of their united palm. They were believing in the same things. They were preaching the same things. They carried the same burdens. And they loved the same things. And that's why we find they were united in power. And the fourth lesson that we learn, they were united in performance. All were filled with the Spirit and they began to speak in tongues. And they went around preaching the word of God and bearing witness to it. Each one was busy having his own part to play for witnessing Jesus Christ. No task is unimportant. Prayer, mass, services, witnesses, labor, even cleaning. Mom, dad, children, brothers and sisters, preachers and deacons all got together to bear witness to the Lord, they were united in performance. That's why in the early church there was a Pentecost. They were united in one purpose. They were united in prayer. They were united in power. And they were united in performance. We have a problem in the church today. Our problem is Many of the Christians are immature. Some are just growing in faith. Some do have the spirit, they are filled with the spirit. There is diversity. But division in the church is work of the Satan. Diabolic. And therefore the Pentecost is not happening. We are the chosen race for God's kingdom. But unfortunately, we have become frozen, frozen race. We are frozen, frozen in our faith, frozen in our prayer, frozen in our attitude, frozen in our outlook. And God chose us for his purpose to build of God's kingdom. A spirit is a great enabler. That's why I said speaking in tongues was not the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle was the transformation of the disciples. From fear to courage, to bear witness and to die for the Lord in faith. And the spirit gives us 
so many gifts to live our faith. He gives us wisdom, he gives us counsel, he gives us understanding, fortitude, he gives us the knowledge, he gives us piety, and he gives us the fear of the Lord. And today, when we look at the church, our parishes are divided. They are divided in the name of even prayer groups. They are divided in an attitude, they are not in one mind and heart. They are not united in performance. Each group challenges the other. Our families are divided. There is so much of diabolical things happening in our families and in our parishes. So naturally the Pentecosts are not happening today. Therefore it is very important for us to attain and gain more and more love, joy, peace, serenity, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and also self-control, which is very important. So we need another Pentecost on the universal church, on the church in India, on the diocese of Mangalore and elsewhere, we need another Pentecost. And for this, four things are important. We need to be united in purpose. We need to be united in prayer. We need to be united in palm. We need to be united in performance. And these four principles are applicable also for our family life. And we ask God today on the Vigil of Pentecost Feast that God may bless us with these sorts of gifts so that we go out like the early church, like the early apostles, to bear witness for the Lord. As long as we individuals, or in the family or in the parish, remain frozen, Pentecost will never happen. And we ask the Lord to um, reunite us with this divine spirit so that we are able to testify to our own faith.